Incognito from Posted on the Corner, tapping in. Hot 107.9 and Remy Martin. We're about to do something special today. Live from Main Street Studios. We're going to mix it up ATL, talk about this mixtape culture. We're going to tap in with some of the greatest influencers from the city. Grab your bottle, let's do it. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Burn One, Mix It Up ATL, Remy Martin. I'm in here with Hot 107.9. Incognito, <laughs> what up, bro? <laughs> What would the industry be without mixtapes? Um, it would be a lot more controlled by the uh, the powers that be, you know? Uh, mixtapes are a way for independent artists and, and, and really anybody to get a foot in the game, you know? That's the beauty, anybody can do it, you know? You don't have to wait for gatekeepers to say, now you can have a turn or now you can drop an album. You can just put something out on your own, you know? How has the mixtape culture of Atlanta impacted the world and the industry? Mixtape, the impact that mixtape has had, mixtapes that have had globally, um, you can't quantify it uh, because of people like Gucci Mane, you know, like he became so prolific, and he put out so many other artists, you know. So it's like from his umbrella, you have Waka Flocka, and you could really just keep going of all the artists that came out through him, you know, um, down the Nicki Minaj and all these, you know, all these different artists. And so, like, the umbrella just gets so big and the, you know, the influence of how many people those people have touched, you know? Um, so it's just a way for independent artists to, to do their thing and to touch people. So you did the mixtape with Gucci Man. Kind of describe the setting of working on that tape and then watching it just spark to one of his greatest tapes. So uh, when, we, when I first met Gucci, he played me so icy. And I was like, yo, let's do a mixtape. And he was like, what is that? You know, it wasn't like a known thing. Like 50 Cent had just started doing artist tapes, but before then it was just like Jelly and, you know, different, you know, um camp mixes and um, like um, uh, just different type of blend tapes, you know, not really artist tapes. And so I was telling Gucci, I was like, you can do an artist tape. And he was like, I didn't, he just wasn't understanding what a mixtape was. You know, he just knew you sign with the label and then you put out your album. Um, he put that out, so I actually did good, but then uh, he came back out. I think he went to jail for a second, and then he came back out and wasn't doing so well. And he hit me up, he was like, yo, what was that thing you were talking about? Do I didn't have to worry about the label? You know, he was like on the outs with his label, you know, and I was like, this was like a vessel for him, you know? I told him, I was like, 50 Cent is just rapping on other people's beats. You have your own songs. You could just do it with your original music, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, I was like, you can put it out, he's getting show money. I was just showing him how 50 Cent was applied, it, you know? And um, he was like, yo, let's do it, you know, let's run it. And so, really going into it, he had like maybe 15 songs, and then we spent like a month working on it, which was fun, you know, and we used a couple songs. Uh, but he let me pick the track list, you know, he let me put it in like two different CDs, and I took the picture. On the back it says Burn One Photography, I didn't have a photography company. You know, you like try to speak things into existence in this world, you know, so. Um, but, and then we did it, and I remember when we first, uh, we first dropped it, we went to the uh, discount mall in Old National, and I walked in there. And he was like, how much do you want for it? And it was a double CD, so I was like, four bucks a piece, you know, wholesale. And he was like, Gucci's cold, man. Nobody wants that. Nobody's going to buy it. And I was like, well, all right, you know. He didn't know I had Gucci with me in the car. You know, Gucci was in my truck. So I go back out to the truck, and Gucci's playing the album, and people have surrounded the car, and they're already coming up to him buying the album. So the dude runs out. He's like, yo, let me get 40 of them, you know. So it's just a message of, like, belief in self, you know. From there, it really went and blew up, like, throughout the Midwest and, and everywhere. So it's like, I couldn't have foreseen it becoming that, and then him becoming like trap god and mixtape god. You know, he kept doing them. It wasn't just chicken talk, he kept going, you know? Um, it was just, it was amazing, you know? It was really beautiful to see. Man, you, I got to stick a pin, you fucked me up, because I forgot y'all used to have to go take the mixtapes to the, uh, the store. Oh, everything was hand to hand. Yeah, when I was doing tapes in high school, I would get off like, I was like 16 or 17, and I'd get off and I'd take my dad's little red pickup truck and drive around 285 and drop CDs off on consignment. You know, like Tobago, DBS Sounds, or, you know, um, Super Sounds. I, I ended up working at uh, Super Sounds, too. That's how I got familiar with Mom and Pops and doing consignment and stuff like that. And so I picked up so much game from them, you know? Like, I go in the CD store, and I remember I didn't even have writing on my CDs at first. You know, it was just a cover. I remember Tobago was like, why don't you write on your CDs? And I was like, I don't know, I don't, I don't have a printer. He was like, well, what if I just put the CD down and nobody sees it? And then, and, you know, it gets mixed up. I was like... I'll print it, you know, so I brought it on there, but I literally just learned by just doing it, you know, learning on your feet and, you know, trial and error. Now, do you feel as though uh, mixtapes can create hit records? Oh, absolutely. 
It happens all the time. It happens all the time. Records become hits off of mixtapes because it's really just, pe hits are just songs that people like, you know? So whether it comes from a mixtape or anything else, it's like as long as it's made available, you know, whether it comes from TikTok or wherever, you know? Uh, okay, for sure. So like speaking of TikTok, um, let's see how, how we landed to TikTok coming from mixtapes. Let me see. Um, so let's just talk about your brand in a sense. So like, what do you feel as though you brought to the mixtape game? So my angle on mixtapes was, at the time, drama was my, um, <laughs> drama was the person I was looking at, like, he was the prototype, you know? He was the one doing artist tapes and stuff like that down here. <clears throat> and he was talking on the tapes, and I was like, I've never been a real talker like that. So I was like, my thing is it's just, just going to be about the music. You know, I'm not going to talk, I'm just going to come up with a couple tags just so people know what they're listening to, what they're tuned into, like a radio station, you know? And just make it about the music, and that'll be my thing. I'll be, like, the alternative, you know? It's like, if you want talking and the songs that he's picking, cool. And then if you want these, you know, it's just like, I didn't want to do what he was doing. You know, I didn't want to be like shouting people out and, and doing that. That just wasn't my thing. And so I had a manager and he was just trying to get me to like talk. And I was like, man, I'm just not going to talk. And so I never did. And then later on, people came up to me, like after a couple of years, like, yo, thank you so much for not talking. <laughs> no, not the drama. You know what I'm saying? That was his thing. And he's a great shit talker. I wasn't in that time. So it had just been bad. I'd have been like DJ screw, not screwed. You know what I'm saying? It had just been kind of dreary and be like, what's up, y'all? Y'all cool? You know what I'm saying? Like it had just been, you know, but that ended up being my thing of not talking, you know? And like my manager at the time didn't see it. I was like, nah, but I'm the, I'm the alternative. People like, I could just put it on and just listen to it. Then I hear your tag and get hype and then, you know? But that was like the the alternative, you know, but I also just came with like just my taste in music You know the types of artists I picked who I chose to work with like Gucci Mane, Young Dro, Bo Hagen, you know, just certain artists I was like These artists really sparked my attention, you know, ASAP Rocky, just different people, you know There's nothing like riding your burn wet, burn wet, then you go straight into the song and feel good So uh, what was it like the first time you were out and you heard somebody a car pass by? And you hear one of your mixtapes. Explain that feeling. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing to hear your music playing from somebody else's speakers. I remember hearing Chicken Talk playing everywhere, you know? Like, people were playing Chicken Talk, like, all the time. And that's dope. Because you never know. It's like, Gucci, I thought, I just always work with people that I think are funny or interesting in their own type of way. I thought Gucci was funny because he was rapping about the most serious stuff, but he was so funny. It was like entertainment, you know, it's like watching a wise guy, it's like Goodfellas, you know, it's like the serious, somebody's getting shot, but it's like somehow they make it a joke and you laugh and it's like, all right, you know, like Gucci was kind of like that. Same thing with Young Drill, he was just so funny. He was like a cartoon character come to life. I was like, if I like it, people might like it. But then when people start liking it, like you like it, you're like, oh shit, like. So now you're that's pretty uh, cool. heavy in the production. How did you transform from the mixtape game to production? Um, that was kind of a natural progression. Mixtapes were kind of slowing down after the raid, after the raid with drama, you know? Like that kind of slowed a lot of stuff down. And then also too, I wasn't getting a lot of music that was inspiring me. Like the beats were just kind of subpar. It was not like a good time of music. It was, I think it was like the time where like people were stopped sampling and so they were trying to do original beats, but the original beats weren't that dope. It's not like now where you have like people doing loops and original samples. It was just like really dry, you know? And so I was like, well, let me, instead of complaining about getting music out of my life, and let me just take time, I'm gonna take a year off and just learn how to make beats. I was like, I'm gonna make five beats a day. And so that's just what I did. Um, it was natural because I was already in that world of working with artists, you know? So after I got done with that year, um, one of my friends was like, yo, you should send some beats to Starlito. And I was like, for real? I was like, these were my practice beats, you know? He was like, yeah, and I sent it to him, we ended up doing Renaissance Gangster, you know? So it was like, it was just kind of a natural progression. And it was just from, wanting to hear something, you know, being like, I loved hearing like 3-6 Mafia and Organized Noise and Willie Hutch and all these soul artists and just different things, you know, 80s pop music. I have so many different, you know, things I hear in my head. I was like, I just wanted to hear it back in the music, you know, and I could be like, man, nobody's dope or no, but there's dope rappers. I was working with Freddie Gibbs at the time, Pill, you know, I'm working with real, like really dope rappers, but I'm just like, if I could just, you know, and now they got like Mad Lib, you know, Freddie Gibbs got Mad Lib, he's getting like the choices beats from Alchemist, you know, it's really dope, you know. It's beautiful. Yo, what's up? Shout out to my man Incognito. We just mixed it up with Remy Martin. Go stream uh, my mixtapes and everything. DJ Burn One. Check me out. www.d5pointsbakery.com. Much love. Burn one. Burn one. <laughs>